What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on a single video. This is a recap for our MTV special called Being Nathan, which stars Nathan Griffith, who is um, Janelle Evans of Teen Mom 2's ex-boyfriend, ex-fiance, and baby daddy. His special starts off with him talking about how he wants to turn his life around, get some sort of career in fitness as well, and we're transported over to his gym where he meets with his trainer, and then later does a little bit of a run through of what he's gonna be doing at a fitness conference competition. Over lunch, he talks to one of his friends about how he's got this new girl in his life that he really wants to, you know, become serious about. He sees her as a potential girlfriend and he talks about how when he was online dating, he wasn't doing it to find another girlfriend, but she just seemed to be perfect in every way for him and just knocked him off of his feet. So he is interested in eventually committing to her. And so the topic of the charges that his ex-girlfriend, Jessica, remember she appeared in Teen Mom 2. She was the girl that Janelle had thrown the mason jar at and they went to court over it. It turns out that she has domestic violence charges out against Nathan, alleging that he had broken into her house and started strangling her. So Nathan claims that none of that is true whatsoever. Another interesting thing that Nathan noted at the beginning of the show was that he's not a very nice person while he's on this diet because he is absolutely crabby, crabby, crabby because it's so strict and you really do see a lot of that throughout the episode. It actually starts when he's in the car with his mom and he starts complaining that she's always touching his mirrors and stuff like that and that he can not stand it and he expects her to by the way be 100,000% in support of him throughout this special don't make him look bad don't do anything that'll embarrass him like just be on team Nathan and be his number one cheerleader and then they get home and they start sitting down and talking and in classic Nathan he's talking about how all these like ser very serious might I add charges and run-ins with the law have ruined his chances of becoming a police officer only temporarily he aims on on like getting them taken care of whatever that means and eventually becoming a cop one day for example he's like yeah like I've got DUIs it's just a D it's just a DUI who doesn't have a DUI these days then he's like the domestic violence stuff is bullshit I'm gonna get it taken off and so a producer asks him whether or not he feels like he's got an alcohol problem is he an alcoholic or anything like that and Nathan claims that he's not and so his mom is kind of like I do not think that Nathan is an alcoholic per se but what I will say though is that you don't get DUIs by being responsible with alcohol. I think that sometimes he might go overboard and not have a certain level of control with it. And this absolutely sets Nathan off. He's like, I do not have a freaking alcohol problem. And again, he tells her, I already told you, you're not supposed to make me look bad in this stuff. Like, stop doing that on camera. I don't want these kinds of conversations on camera. And what I have to say at this point though, is you guys, I'm really loving his mom thus far. Like I trust her with Kaiser. If she's willing to be a straight shooter with Nathan and not bullshit, him, you just know that she's probably the same way with her grandson and anyone else. So I'm liking her thus far. Next, Nathan leaves for his competition in South Carolina, rocking an alpha sweater and ego sweat. Nice and cocky, he says. So as he's packing up to leave, actually, he talks about how he's all constantly been in relationships for attention. He's never actually really, really been in love with the people. It was mostly like a companionship thing. So producers like, so wait, you were never in love with Janelle? He was like, oh no, I was never in love with her. I mean, I have love for her and stuff, but I was never in love with her. And he kind of exposes himself, I should say, as being like a gold digger or whatever. He was like, I was pretty happy. I got money and I have a kid. I was kind of like, huh? You got money, eh? So they get to the hotel and Nathan asks Grady, the producer, to shave his back. And um, Grady was like, hell no, your mom's here. Ask her to do it. So um, Nathan gets his mom to shave his back. And so he's kind of just standing there waiting for her to shave his back. So she's like, okay, I guess I'll do it like this. So when she starts, he's like, oh my God, mom, you're not going to put shaving cream or whatever on me? Do you just shave your legs like this? I was team mom on this because she hesitated as well as if like, are you sure you want? it this way he had the shaving cream there and he didn't bother to put it on himself so I don't understand or give it to her even like what he was expecting from her it's not every day a grown-ass man asks you to shave his effing back and so again we're seeing his anger problems really really bubble here like he is on 20. his poor mom like then starts shaving his back and he's just bitching at her about the way she's doing it. he's like slow down you're not in a hurry um and then she accidentally like nips him up on the neck or something like that and he goes full-blown crazy 
crazy mode, like psycho, psycho yelling. And the producers and his mom were all like laughing kind of like nervously for his mom. But then the producers are like, this guy's a psycho kind of laugh. And he's like, you know what? Stop filming. Stop filming. This is over. Get out. So he kicks everyone out. And it looked like his mom was trying to get out as well. And he closes the door with the two of them in there. I was like, yay dude chill out he is a very angry person like i would hate for my child to be around him the fitness competition happens the next day and um nathan uh after he's called off stage for the first time is really angry he doesn't feel like he did a good job and that he didn't even place at all so he's like cameras off cameras off as he's walking into the hotel and stuff and then they go back to find out where he placed and it turns out he was right he didn't place and so he takes it a lot better this time around because kaiser's there and so as he's leaving he's carrying kaiser he's like you know what I lost but this is a lesson like when you lose when you don't win you're able to look at it and see where you went wrong and do better next time and all seems to be well he seemed to be a good sport until he got back to his hotel room where the mom is just talking to the camera people the producers and stuff he's like honestly you guys I looked better than those people I feel like I got robbed and so his mom's like you know what Nate she's so cute you know what Nathan I feel like you did a good job honey but that's just coming from me you know an old fat mom and this asshole goes you know what and he's looking at her like in that kind of contemptish kind of way where he's like you know what like you actually motivate me sometimes and we all knew what he was getting on at that point and it was so rude after all she does for him and puts up with him for him uh with for him he does that to her on worldwide television nathan ugh and she was like you know what i will kick your ass don't think you're too big for an ass whooping from your mama and i was like yes doris team you the scene calms down and at a certain point nathan's like you know what I'm gonna go to an after hours bar and his mom just had like the look of death on her face. Like she knows this means he's gonna be blackout drunk or uh, back at the hotel when he's done or in jail. Like she was just like, are you, like, do you really want to do this? Remember, you've got like a child in the other room. And that reminded me like, yeah, Nathan, you've got your son and you rarely get him. So why don't you want to just spend more time with him? Even if that's just like watching a movie and letting him sleep or reading a book while he's sleeping in the bed next to you. Why do you want to go out and get drunk and feel too hungover the next day to really get quality time with Kaiser in? You know, like, ugh, dude. So anyway, um... He's like, you know what? I'm going to an after hours bar or whatever. Like there are always after parties. I've made up my mind. Goodbye, everyone. Hasta la vista. And um, before everyone could uh, leave, we got footage of him pouring wine into one of those like plain old hotel coffee cups or whatever and pre-drinking. Things really get crazy the next day when he reveals that uh, he basically met a chick down at the hotel bar who recognized him from Team Mom and it seems like they slept together based on his innuendos and like his smirks and stuff like that and how he was like, oh, I'm gonna look like such an asshole because I already have like this one girl. So it turns out that the girl's name is Becky and they decide to go out the next day together as well and grab some drinks over what seems to be lunch or something. And so he asks her, hey, like since you seem to know me from TV, I mean, you know my baby mama and my kid and everything from the show, have you heard about my latest charges? She goes, no. And so he's like, oh, well, yeah, like my most recent girlfriend, she's got these charges out against me that can have me in jail for like the rest of my life. She's claiming that I broke into her home and strangled her. And so Becky was like, well, is it true? And Nathan, Nathan goes, no, it's not true. I mean, do I seem like a violent guy to you? Dude, she has known you for not even 24 hours. Like Ted Bundy could pass for a really lovely guy in less than that. How was she supposed to know? After breaking down his like latest pending charges, he suddenly like seemingly out of nowhere. I didn't understand the connection. He literally just states, uh, he literally just states Newton's law of reaction. He's like, okay, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. I actually don't even think he said it that way. I think he missed the equal and opposite. I think he just said there's an e opposite reaction. And so he goes, that's Newton's law, but people think I'm stupid. They didn't, they wouldn't think that I knew that. And it was kind of, okay, I don't understand what Newton's law has to do with you and these domestic violence charges. I didn't get the link whatsoever, but I wasn't like, was I not paying attention or was that random as F-U-C-K? And so Becky's kind of like, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the hotel, a producer calls Jessica and asks about the charges and getting her side for the show. So she agrees to meet up with them in the evening with what seems to be Nathan's former friend, Olivia, as well. And so Jessica, when she walked in, she looked really devastated. And by the way, you guys, this Olivia girl is so 
pretty with such amazing makeup. I was just like staring the whole scene. <laughs> Jessica says that the domestic violence that was going on in their relationship was actually really frequent and that Nathan only has two charges because the other times it was happening and that police were called, she kept covering up for him because he would always guilt trip her and make her feel like an awful person for trying to stand up for herself. Again, she claims what happened was that Nathan broke into her house, jumped on top of her and was strangling her and she was fortunate enough that her roommate Alex was home and able to call the police and file charges herself and that, you know, she was in the place where she could allow them to stick and no longer, you know, try to hide things for Nathan. Jessica and Olivia both agree that it seems like Nathan can't really control himself or his anger and Jessica then tells a story that is just so so devastating and like sad to hear you guys like just a warning that like what Jessica shared was really really sad like I don't remember the last time I teared up during a teen mom scene but this was definitely one of them so she says that um, the first time that shit really hit the fan between her and Nathan she actually was hiding in his closet and um, by the time like I guess he'd let her out or whatever she had to pretend to you know to protect herself that she was still with him and that she wanted to be with him and so she climbed into bed and um, I guess he was trying to sleep with her and so she rejected him and he got really pissed off at that to the point where he started like sticking his fingers down her throat and she was like I lost my voice for a good long time over that um, I felt like I had strep throat and it was just you know, some things there are just no words for, and that is one of those things where you're, you can't even imagine what that's like and what would possess someone to even do that to another person. Like, absolutely in saying what she was describing. Thankfully though for Jessica, she says everything's been going great for her since, you know, she's been six months out and she went through a very intense 14 week counseling program as well. Back at Nathan's house, he is grilling up a storm for the family and a producer asks his mom why she all of a sudden agreed to appear on Teen Mom when we've never seen her in all the years that we've known Nathan. And so she gave a really good answer. She's like, you know what? This time I decided it would be great to do this show because I feel like this is an awesome opportunity for people to see what it's like for people to go from being in the military to adjusting back to regular life and the way that it affects them. And so she starts telling a story that really really humanizes Nathan, okay? She was like, for example, one of the first times Nathan was driving when he got back home, um, he just randomly started swerving on the road and I asked him, why are you just swerving like that? And he told me that in his mind, he was just so used to um, imagining there being landmines and stuff like that on the road while he was away um, that he just could not easily snap out of that. And so I, I was just so riveted by what she was saying and it really helped me to get Nate in uh, it and it really helped me to see Nate in a different light but unfortunately Nathan caught wind of what she was saying and he came and snap snap snapped at her he's like what the heck are you talking about don't talk anything bad about the military on TV stop doing that like I swear to god mom I told you stop talking about bullshit on TV I do not want the military looking bad on TV it's just so ironic that this pissed him off and he shut down a conversation that could have opened up like millions of hearts to him because I'm someone who absolutely does not like Nathan at all but listening to his mom talk about how he's suffering from PTSD and he's trying to readjust to regular civilian life helped me to be like okay like let me go easy on him because this whole time that I was watching the special I was like Nathan is so unpleasant to be around. I don't understand why his parents keep him around. They should just kick him out, like get him to deal with his own SHIT because he is an ungrateful like POS. He treats them like shit, but like understanding that PTSD is something he's dealing with and like readjusting to daily life really helped. But unfortunately he wanted to shut that damn conversation down. He was literally so pissed that he got back in the house. He's like, all right, you guys are done for the day. Get out. And so the mom's like, why is it because I mentioned like PTSD in the military he's like yep that's why I'm sick of stupid civilians talking about things they don't know about but thankfully the cameras get to stay and Nathan lets us know that um, he's going out to party and so he casually calls his girl Friday and is like meet me at my house we're gonna get a hotel later and so his mom's like which girl is that he's like oh my god mom like don't make me look bad on TV I can't believe I'm gonna look like such an asshole to my new girlfriend like my potential girlfriend uh, that I'm dealing with someone else and sleeping with them for the night forgetting that he's on camera he's like oh shit 
don't use that, don't use that. So the next morning, his mom says the domestic violence charges were actually shocking to her because she's never known Nathan to hurt anyone and she says that she didn't raise a criminal. And Nathan starts talking about how MTV portrays him as like a really angry, short-fused person, which, I mean, if you didn't blow up on people, there would be no footage of you blowing up on people to use, right? So obviously this is kind of who you are. Of course, it's chopped and screwed and exaggerated, but this is the way you speak to people. And he complains that uh, we don't see Janelle and like other girls flipping out on him and stuff like that. But we have seen quite a bit of Janelle being crazy towards him as well. Uh, so anyway, um, the two of them then talk about the pending charges and the seriousness of them. And so his mom, again, is like, you know what? I prayed for him to come back from war, like safe and sound. God brought him back to me. I don't think that he brought Nathan back just to, you know, put him in jail for life. I'm, I'm still praying for Nathan to be okay. And I feel like everything is going to be okay again. And so the show ends with Nathan talking about his plans yet again. So he reiterates that his plan is to either become really successful in the fitness world or to eventually become a police officer. But regardless of what happens, he also acknowledges that he could be facing the rest of his uh, life in prison. But he finishes off by saying, whatever happens, I'm just going to keep my head up and stay positive uh, throughout the process that is life. And so I liked that uh, finishing sentence of his because it is very true. His life can go any which way. It's just about waiting and seeing what happens. So did you enjoy watching Being Nathan? I personally did actually. Like he did not do what he claimed it would do, which was change people's views of him because now he gets like the full like solid block of time. Because honestly, we did not really see him fathering his child for all that much of the show. I mean, he saw Kaiser for what, like two minutes, if even that throughout this whole episode, you didn't really see him being a dad, even when he did have a lot of opportunities to, it seemed like his priority is fitness. And uh, we saw him treat his parents really badly as well. I felt really bad for his mom. She obviously loves, loves, loves him and is so affectionate with him, but he treats her so badly. And the dad as well, the dad uh, is at the point where he doesn't even really talk to Nathan because he's just so sick of Nathan. Nathan blowing up, it seems like. And so um, I don't really think the show did all that much to change people's perceptions of him. I think that his mom made a lot of really good solid attempts to try to do that, but Nathan always put the kibosh on them, ironically enough. But that was a pretty decent show to watch nonetheless. So you guys, let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on being Nathan in the comment section down below. And as usual, we'll chat. You can also like this video, subscribe for more, feel free to share it with your friends as well. And follow me across social media where I absolutely love chatting with you. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.